Hello everyone, I'm Lian Ming Zhong from UC Berkeley. Today I'm going to talk about our work on generating high-performance tensor programs for deep learning. This is joint work with collaborators from UC Berkeley, Alibaba, and AWS. To begin with, let us take a look at the current deep learning system stack. At the top of the stack, there are several popular high-level frameworks. At the bottom of the stack, there are various hardware platforms. In order to run deep learning models on these platforms, high-level frameworks rely on vendor-provided operator libraries, such as NVIDIA CoDN and Intel MKLDN. These libraries provide high-performance implementations for operators, such as convolution and matrix multiplication. However, building these libraries requires substantial engineering effort because you have to manually optimize each operator for each platform. Relying on static libraries also prevents flexible optimizations such as general operator fusion. So compiler techniques were recently introduced to address this problem. By using the intermediate representation provided by the compiler, the high-level frameworks only need to send the computer declarations to the compiler. The compiler then generates optimized code for various hardware platforms. Here is an example of the declaration for a dense layer with ReLU activation. I list both the mathematical expression and the declarations in two compilers, Halid and TVN. You can see the declarations are very similar to the mathematical expressions. Basically, they specify how each element in the output tensor is computed. Such declarations are very expressive to describe most computations in deep learning. However, it makes the optimization in compilers very challenging because there are billions of possible implementations for just one declaration. The compiler has to search in a very large space to generate the most efficient code. There have been some research work on automatic generation of tensor programs. Next, we describe some of them. TVM is a compiler for deep learning. It supports semi-automatic code generation with Auto-TVM, a template-guided search algorithm. As shown in the right figure, the user has to provide a template to define the search space for each operator. The template specifies the required organizations for an operator, but leaves some tunable parameters. The compiler then runs a parameter search algorithm to figure out the best combinations of these parameters. This method has achieved good performance on a lot of neural networks, but it also has some limitations. First of all, this process is not fully automated because you still have to manually design a sophisticated template for each operator. It requires significant engineering effort. Despite the complexity of the template design, a template only covers a limited search space because it's prohibitive to manually enumerate all possible optimizations. Another work, Halide Auto Scheduler, targets both image processing and deep learning. It utilizes beam search to generate the programs. Unlike TVN, it does not require predefined manual template. It instead uses a set of general unfolding rules to unfold all nodes in a computational graph sequentially. As shown in this figure, it's during the middle of the search. The compiler had finished the building program for some of the nodes. It then lists all possible candidates for building the next statement. However, the number of possible candidates is very large, so it uses a learned cost model to compare these candidates and prune some of them. We can say it does greedy beam search with early pruning. There are also problems with this method because during the search, the intermediate candidates are all incomplete programs the cost model cannot accurately predict the final performance of incomplete programs, though the bin search can potentially prove very good programs in the very beginning. In addition, the sequential order makes the error accumulate and limits the design of the search space. In summary, there are two key challenges of this problem. The first one is how to build a large search space automatically without the need of manual templates. The second one is how to search efficiently by utilizing more information of complete programs. For the first challenge, we propose a hierarchical search space. It decouples high-level structures and low-level details. So we can enumerate high-level structures flexibly and sample low-level details efficiently. 
For the second challenge, we randomly sample complete programs from the search space. We then fine tune the performance of the complete programs. Fine tuning complete programs avoids the issue of inaccurate pruning of incomplete programs. When applying the search based method for a whole neural network, there is an additional challenge. Because a deep neural network can have many layers, the shape configuration for these layers are different. So we have to generate programs for all different layers, which means there is a lot of search tasks to do. The last challenge is how to allocate time or computing resource for many search tasks coming from the networks. To solve this challenge, we utilize a task scheduler to slice the time and prioritize important subgraphs. Next, we show how we build a system to combine all these techniques to solve the problem. Here is the system overview. The system takes deep learning models as input. It then partitions the big model into small subgraphs. A task scheduler is utilized to allocate the time resource for optimizing many subgraphs. At each iteration, it picks a subgraph that has the most potential to increase the end-to-end -end performance. For this subgraph, we use a program sampler to randomly sample a batch of initial programs. Then we use a performance tuner to fine tune the performance of sampled programs. So we get a batch of optimized programs. The optimized programs are sent to actual hardware for measurements. When the measurements are finished, the profiling results are used as the feedback to update all components of the system. This process is repeated iteratively until the optimization converges or we run out of time budget. Inside the program sampler, we use a hierarchical search space. So it includes the high-level sketch generation and the low-level random annotation. Inside the performance tuner, we utilize evolutionary search and a learned cost model. This model is changed during the search with the collected measurement data. The cost model is orders of magnitude faster than the measurement, so we can use it to guide the search and only measure the pricing programs. Next, we describe the major components one by one. The first one is the program sampler for sampling programs. The goal of the program sampler is to construct a large search space and uniformly sample from the space. We construct a hierarchical search space and randomly sample complete programs from the space. The space has two levels, sketch and annotation. The sketch level contains a few good high-level structures. A sketch determines things like main tiling structures and loop order. The annotation level contains billions of choices of low-level details, such as tile size and loading factors. This separation allows flexible enumeration of high-level structures and efficient sampling of low-level details. For a computer declaration, we first generate a list of good sketches with a few derivation rules. A sketch is similar to a template in TVM, but we generate multiple of them automatically. We traverse the nodes in the computational graph. For each node, if the computation expression of the node satisfies the condition of one rule, we will apply the rule to build the sketch. To sample complete programs, we then randomly pick a sketch and randomly annotate it with concrete tile sizes, vectorization, parallelization, and so on. After the random annotation, we can get a complete program. Here is an example of the sketch generation. In the left figure, it shows three equivalent forms of the input. The first form is the mathematical expression of a matrix multiplication followed by an element-wise maximum. The second form is a naive program got by directly expanding the loop indices in the expression. The last form is the computational deck with four nodes, two input nodes and two computer nodes. We traverse the DAG and apply rules to build multiple sketch. Here is an example of the generated sketch. It's derived by a sequence of rules. The sketch builds a multi-level tiling structure for this DAG and fuses the element-wise maximum into the matrix multiplication. Here is another example of sketch generation. The input is a more complicated graph with five nodes, and these are two of the generated sketches. They are built by two different sequences of rules. In the first sketch, we, the rules add a new sketch node into the deck and build the multi-level tiling and fusion structure. 
in the second sketch, the rule refactor a reduction loop into a spatial loop to expose more opportunity for parallelism. After we get a sketch, we have to make it a complete program by random annotation. The left figure is a generated sketch, and the right figure shows two of the annotated programs. To do the annotation, we randomly fill in concrete tile sizes and randomly parallelize some outer loops, vectorize and unroll some inner loops, so we get complete programs with basic organizations. The sample of programs may have a fewer number of four loops because the loop with extent one can be simplified. We also apply layout rewrite according to the multi-level tiling structure. We derive an optimal layout to make the access of the constant tensors most cache friendly. Next, we introduce the performance fine tuning with evolutionary search and a learned cost model. Render sampling gives good coverage of the space but does not guarantee the performance. So we utilize evolutionary search and a learned cost model to fine tune the performance. We use the sampled programs and the good programs from previous iterations at the initial formulation. We design mutation and the crossover rules to generate the next generation from the current generation. The mutation rules can randomly mutate the tile sizes, parallel, vectorization, granularity, and the computation location. The crossover rules merge to computational tags by randomly picking those from one of the parents. These operations are designed to work with general tensor programs because they will parse the programs and do corresponding mutations. In contrast, the search algorithm in TVM only works in a grid-like fixed parameter space without dependency. Besides, unlike the sequential construction in Halide, these evolutionary operations do out-of-order rewrite to the programs. We train a gradient boosting decision tree as the land cost model. We mainly target data parallel tensor programs. They consist of loop nest and some innermost assignment statement. This is an example of a tensor program. There are two known loop innermost statements, statement B and statement C. We estimated the cost of this program at the sum of cost of B and the cost of C. So we do static analysis to extract features for every known loop innermost statement and make prediction for them. We then add the predictions as the cost of a whole program. The extracted features include numbers of used catch lines, used memory, reuse distance, arithmetical intensity curves, and so on. To train the model, we use the measurement data collected during the search. The data set typically contains dozens of thousands of programs when operating a single network. Then it comes to the last component, task scheduler. When optimizing a whole network, there are many subgraphs in it. For example, in ResNet50, there are 29 unique subgraphs after graph partition. They are mainly convolution layers with different shape configurations. We have to generate different programs for each of them because the optimization strategy depends on these shape configurations. Existing systems optimize these tasks one by one with a fixed time allocation. This is not optimal because some graphs are not performance bottleneck and some graphs may not have room for improvement. So we should not waste time on them. So uh, we use a task scheduler to slice the time and dynamically prioritize important subgraphs. We define the end-to-end -end execution time as an objective function and optimize it with gradient descent. We estimate the impact of each task by optimistic guess and the similarity between tasks. At each iteration, we pick the task that can optimize the end-to-end -end objective function farthest. Then comes to the evaluation results. We benchmark the performance of generated programs at three levels, single operator, subgraph, and the whole network. We use state-of-the-art static libraries and search-based compilers as baselines. First, we do the single operator benchmark on an Intel CPU. We pick 10 common operators used in deep learning, which include 1D, 2D, 3D convolution, matrix multiplication, and other variants of convolution. For each operator, we select four common shapes and measure the throughput. This figure plots the geometric mean of the throughput. The throughputs are normalized to the throughputs of the best performing framework. So the best performing framework has a normalized performance of one. 
We perform tests for two batch size, 1 and 16, which are commonly used for inference applications. The baseline PyTorch is backed by vendor-provided library. Halide, Black Tensor, and AutoTVM are search-based frameworks. Answer is our system. As shown in this figure, Answer performs best in all cases with significant speed up. We study the best programs, and we find that most of the best programs found by Answer are outside the search space of existing search-based frameworks. For example, the large speed up in matrix 2 norm is because Answer can parallelize reduction loops. The large speed up in convolution 2D transpose is because Answer can utilize correct the tiling and unrolling to simplify the multiplication of the serials in the stranded case. The speed up in other variants of convolution is because the answer can explore more tiling levels and the computation locations of padding. Then we do the subgraph benchmark on two hardware platforms, a CPU and a, a, a NVIDIA GPU. We pick two subgraphs, a convolution layer and another subgraph from the multi-head attention layer. Similar to previous benchmark, we use four shapes and plot the normalized geometric mean. We also use the same set of baselines. As shown in the figure, answer performs best in all cases. The search space for subgraphs has to include optimizations involving multiple operators. These optimizations are hard to be covered by templates designed just for single operators. However, answer can explore different ways to compose the operators in a subgraph, so it has a comprehensive coverage of the large search space. So it achieves up to 14x speed up against the best alternative. Finally, we run the benchmark for whole neural networks on three platforms. We pick five popular networks. We measure the inference speed under two batch sizes. Here are the results on the Intel CPU. PyTorch and TensorFlow are backed by many libraries. They have very good implementation for large matrix modifications, so they perform well on BERT with large batch size. AutoTVN has very good templates for convolution layers, so it performs very well on ResNet 50. They provide strong baselines for these popular networks. However, Answer is able to perform the best or equally the best in all tested cases with up to 3.8x speed up against the best alternative. Because Answer covers a large search space and has an efficient exploration strategy. Here are the results on an NVIDIA V100 GPU. It also has a similar story. Last but not least, the search-based method is very portable. Without any change of the search policy and the search space, we run Answer on an ARM CPU. As shown in the figure, also, Answer also achieves significant speed up against platform-specific TensorFlow Lite and AutoTVN. We also do an ablation study. We run four variants answer to optimize mobile net v2 on the Intel CPU. We plot the performance curve where x axis is the search time and the y axis is the speed up relative to a baseline. The baseline is an auto TVN after 30,000 measurement trials. The blue curve is answer with all introduced techniques. The red curve is answer without a task scheduler, so it does round robin and allocates the same amount of time resource to every task. The green curve is answer without fine tuning, so it's just a random search. The purple curve is answer without a large search space. We limit the search space to make it similar to the space in manual templates. From the figure, we can see the most important factor is the search space. Fine tuning also improves the results significantly. The task scheduler accelerates the search by prioritizing important subgraphs like 3x3 three three convolution layers. Finally, with all introduced techniques, Answer can match the performance of all 2 TVN with 10x less search time, despite its larger search space. In summary, we build Answer, a search-based system for automatic generation of high-performance tensor programs. Answer introduces techniques to improve the search in three aspects. It provides a mechanism to generate a large search space automatically. It searches efficiently with a land cost model. It slices the time and smartly schedule many such tasks together. Okay, thank you so much for listening.